for our one and only 8 o'clock game, we have arguably the second most interesting game of the day. I know spread-wise, technically speaking, Minnesota-Iowa is supposed to be closer, and technically spread-wise, Ole Miss and Auburn are supposed to be closer, but, like, let's be honest here. No one wants to watch Minnesota and Iowa play football. That's really boring, and Ole Miss is probably going to destroy Auburn despite the spread not being very high. Utah... Uh, by the way, I spoiled it. 8 o'clock, we number 14, Utah is 5-1. and one. Trouble number 18, USC, who's 6-1. and one. USC fair by 7 on Fox. Um, Nate Johnson's gone 39-72, thrown for 499 yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions. Jaquindon Jackson's had 61 carries for 333 yards and a touchdown. And Mikey Matthews had 21 catches for 202 yards. Caleb Williams has gone 142 at 203, thrown for 2,021 yards, 23 touchdowns, four interceptions. Marshawn Lloyd's had 75 carries for 565 yards and five touchdowns. Taj Washington has got 25 catches for 497 yards and five touchdowns. USC's 13 and 9 against Utah all the time, although the last three games have gone to Utah, so they're making this a lot closer. Uh, they beat them once in 2021, and they beat them twice in 2022 in the regular season and in the conference championship utah has had usc's number as of late and this is an elimination game you know i said earlier it's two elimination games today this is the second one whoever wins not only stays pretty decently in the pac-12 playoff picture especially if you're usc right like your loss is at a conference you're still very deep in that play us the pac-12 playoff picture just in the playoff picture period no matter knowing how much we know about the pac-12 and how good that football league is this year you're going you're gonna to have a good shot if you win out, if you're any of these football teams. But one of these football teams will be eliminated next week. One of them will not be. I'm going to be talking about Utah regardless next week. Unlike, unless Washington State pulls off an epic upset and USC wins, then I won't be talking about Utah either way. But um, I think what's really interesting is this is strength, strength against strength, right? You're talking about Utah's one of the best defense in the Pac-12, maybe even the country, right? This is a great defense. And then USC's offense went off the rails a little bit last, last week against Notre Dame. Didn't think that their defense wasn't going to be the weak spot. It was going to be their offense. But this is still Caleb Williams. This is still USC Trojans offense. You're talking about one of the best offenses in college football versus one of the best defenses in college football. It's going to be just so awesome to watch, right? The reason Utah was able to beat them in the regular season last year, right, was because their offense was good. The offense was good with Cam Rising, and that turned into a shootout. Didn't think that the strength of Utah was not going to be their defense last year, but it really wasn't. It was their offense and Cam Rising, which was really awesome. So it hasn't been the case this year. A lot of Utah's game plan has been run the ball a lot. Don't make Nate Johnson throw the ball so much and hope to come out with, eke out some victories. Cal played him pretty close last week, and Cal's not a great football team. USC lost last week to Notre Dame. It's a big game for both these football teams. Utah just needs to keep just hanging in there until maybe Cam Rising eventually comes back. They need Cam Rising back badly. I don't think he's going to be back for this game. I like USC's offense to eventually wear out that Utah defense and put up a good amount of points. At least more points than Utah can match. Give me USC to win and cover at home.